Let's talk about the Cougs. It is Pac-12 Men's Basketball Media Day in San Francisco with the basketball season right around the corner. It's time to talk about Washington State. It's great to have Mohamed Gay and Kyle Smith with us. We'll hear from TJ Bamba coming up shortly. But gentlemen, welcome. Thanks. Season right around the corner. Year four for you. Uh, on the Palouse coach, uh, what has you excited this year? Oh, this this group is fun. Uh, this guy, for starters, Muhammad and TJ, I think we have two really good leaders, good players too. And when your best players are your best leaders, you have a chance to be really good. Kyle, what what does it do for for team chemistry, team morale when you have players jumping over their teammates to dunk the ball? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, Mael has a great attitude. He, 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 I don't think he knew what happened because I didn't. It went so quick, I didn't see it happen. But uh, when they post it, though, it's eh. yeah. I, I was kidding, <laughs> no. Muhammad. Let's go back to last offseason or last spring, and you put your name in the draft, and, and but ultimately decided to come back. What was the feedback like, and why did you ultimately decide to come back? Uh, it was a great feedback. I had great workouts. They was all positive. Uh, I decided to come back to play for Coach Smith and just. Play with TJ, play with a group of guys, and we talk about what we can do this year. Obviously, we had a great year last year, but this year can be special too, so I was, I was down for it. What can you do this year? Mm, win, win more. Last year, NIT, semis, Madison yeah. Square Garden. Did that give you a level of confidence that there was more for you to accomplish? For sure. We had a great end last year. We had a great group too. But I feel like this year we got a great group. We're unselfish. We play for each other. We want the next person to win. I think it's going to be special. Did that the end of last season, Kyle, do anything for you guys? You got, you know, you have some new players, but like, does that carry over? I think that's for the program. I think it creates an expectation. Our first expectation expectation was just to be a postseason team. Right. All right. And then we absolutely were able to beat Santa Clara. Then we go on the road. We beat an SMU team that was undefeated at home, and then we beat BYU on the road. So. I think it always elevates the profile of your program, elevates our expectations for ourselves. So the guys that are returning, they, they expect to be good. New guards this year, but bigger guards. It's yeah. interesting. You know, you had yeah. two guys that last year that were smaller that came in, and now you have seemingly two bigger guys that are going to play a lot. Does that change? I know you approach the game differently than a lot with the analytics and all that, yeah. but does, does size change anything for you in terms of how you're scheming offensively, defensively? Absolutely. We, we're, our team's kind of inverted a little bit. We have bigger guards with uh, Justin Powell and TJ Bamba and Jay Mullins. Um, and even Andre's like a guard for He'll play the four. So we're a little more interchangeable. Now we, you know, we're not going to have Deshaun most probably for the whole year. So uh, our depth and size is a little different. So we'll be a little more fluid offensively. Um, I have them and some people that will we'll probably look a little more like our, our coach, teams like coach in San Francisco. In Columbia, someone mm-hmm. will be, I think will be, like Muhammad made the comment, really unselfish team. And we uh, we struggle to get 10 assists a game, and I think we'll, we won't struggle there this year. What do you enjoy about coaching Muhammad Gay? Uh, his unbelievable attitude. He really enjoys, shows up to work early, leaves late. Has a, he's very coachable. Um, you know, to be have someone as talented as him to come in our program and then establish himself. I never had a captain as a sophomore, and he has respect to everyone and. You don't know it, but he, he's a big lover. <laughs> he he gives, gives a lot, gets a lot. Um, you know, and he likes to speak of himself in the third person occasionally. Was <laughs> oh, that right? It, it, uh, it, it came up earlier, Kyle. I forget who we were talking to, but you know, all these guys that put their name in the draft, they come back, and it's all the feedback they get is about them as individuals. And I'm involved in the pre-draft stuff every spring. And one thing that these players need to understand is that, you know what can help you the most? Winning. Amen. That's what can help you the most. And so, to me, it's always interesting in hearing guys talk about what they need to do. Well, you need to win, too. For sure. Yeah. It's important. But, no, I think he's up for it. I, I think we use that all the time when big analytics guys. But you look at the guys that are drafted, that go, they're, they're usually playing the NCAA tournament. They're usually good teams. Um, you don't see many guys off losing teams make it. And there's a reason for that. So that's a big part. Um, and NBA organizations want the same thing. They want winners. I said this earlier, Mohammed. 18th pick in the draft last year from our conference. You know how many points a game he averaged? No, sir. Eight. Eight points a game, 18th pick in the draft. Affects the game in different ways and affects winning. We're, we're going to hear from uh, TJ Bamba here in a second. Before we go over there, though, Coach, what, what do you like about coaching him? Oh, Bamba, he's, he's a beast, man, from the, from the Bronx. Uh, <laughs> 
No, he's just been, uh, he's got a great attitude, hard worker. He's made, uh, he's the one we talk about, the hustle stats, analytics. He's yeah. made the grind and where he's coming. I, I think we're really expecting a, a breakout year this year. All right, let's, uh, let's hear from TJ and Jordan Kent. Well, TJ, coach says you're a hard worker, and I asked you, how did the offseason go? You said, I just hooped. I watched film, and I stretched. And you talk about your development this offseason. Where are you really trying to improve the most? Uh, definitely trying to like improve my decision making, IQ, slowing myself down, being able to read the floor, like you know, making a move to really like impact the game and like helping my teammates and being unselfish. You were mentioning you like to watch film of Donovan Mitchell, Dwayne Wade. What do you pick up from them? What do you see as far as things that you can implement into your game? I mean, when they get on the court, they looked at us being fearless. Like you know, they're tough, tough guards who get downhill change their pace, you know, have a variety of different types of finishes, especially because of how strong they are on top. And, like, I'm strong up myself up top. So it's like being able to look at that and then pick it out and be like, okay, I can do that. Let's work on this. Let's work on that. You're used to being part of a team. You have five siblings. What was that like growing up, and where do you sit as far as being the eldest or the youngest amongst them all? Growing up, I mean, I was pretty much like the baby because I'm the <laughs> second, second to youngest. I have a little baby sister. But, I mean, they always was there for me, supported me. It was a lot of um, time of my childhood where I wasn't in America. I was in um, Senegal, West Africa. Mm -hmm. So during that stretch, I wasn't around them at all. But they always, like, would call me, tell me, like, they're here for me. So, you know, I always felt their support. So I always felt like I had people in my corner who supported me, and that just helped me as, as I grew up. Do you send them a lot of gear or a lot of Washington State stuff? I don't even got to send them. They just take it from me. Oh. <laughs> They, just, they, just, they come on over and you got less laundry on, all of a sudden. All of a sudden, I'm missing clothes. I'm missing shirts, sweatpants, <laughs> hoodies. I'm like, all right, I know. So, are, they, are they coming for you or are they coming for the gear, to be they, honest? That's what I be asking them. And they always tell me, uh, coming for you. You know, they yeah. say it with a little smirk, so I know what they're really coming for. All right, well, with Coach Smith, there's a term called nerd ball, the analytics. But you watch the style of play, and I'm thinking to myself, it's got to be fun being a guard, getting a chance to play for Coach mm -hmm. Smith. Nah, it really is. I mean... He live and die by the three, really, like, you know, we got a whole song after we win games, and, you know, it, it promotes shooting the three. So it's like being able to shoot, make plays, hunt the assists, it's fun, man. It's just basketball is all about. And then on top of that, add on the defensive things that we could do, be great there. It just makes the game more exciting for us. Yeah, and then defensively, where are you guys trying to make a step this season? Because it really has felt like you guys have gotten a lot more athletic over the last couple of seasons. Right. Uh, I feel like last year's defensive team, we were good. I feel like we were top in the country in that area. And we lost FA, you know, being having a shot block goal could um, impact shots at the rim. Uh, but this year, we upgraded on the uh, perimeter in terms of size. So it's like we have longer guards, so we should be able to, you know, Match, match up great against other guards like tall guards big guards in the pack 12 especially and then constantly add pressure and you know make life hard on our opponents lastly you guys have been practicing for four or five weeks what have you learned about this year's team what has really stood out to you so far uh definitely our unselfishness mm -hmm. like we play for each other right now we hunting the assists nobody got there's no egos we're meshing very well and on top of that like we want to get better we're really a hungry group like defensive defensive practices like you know when we started practicing we weren't great people were having a hard time but from that point to now i definitely think we made a lot of jumps and definitely trending in the right direction all right well here's hoping you can hang on to some more of that gear when the family comes and takes it from you but appreciate it best of luck and uh don obviously sounds like it'd be a lot of fun for you to play in this system if you're living and dying by the three yeah yeah getting up a lot of shots would be <laughs> that's what don does good right? for me Don didn't take any threes, Jordan. <laughs> no, not a lot of threes back then. Um, uh, what I was thinking about, Kyle, is, you know, the success you had at the end of last year. And you said there is carryover, that, 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 that winning and that mentality will affect this year. What needs to happen this year to get to the, the big show, the NCAA tournament versus the NIT? Well, I think we established ourselves in the first three years that we were good defensively and rebounding, and that was an emphasis, and we led the Pac-12 in shot blocks, I believe, last year. Now, we're a little different. We don't have Deshaun and F.A., um, so we're going to have to really make sure we're good there. I think we've made the adjustments and uh, becoming better offensively, better perimeter shooting, better passing, better uh, that piece, but we've got to be able to still defend and rebound the right level. Is there an emphasis on a fast start? I mean, you guys were Ken Palm 44 
last um, year. Like the, the the overall resume, right? Statistically, was very good. Yeah, we 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 would like to think we hopefully returning guys. We lost some tight ball games that if we had beaten Boise or San Diego or South Dakota State, and we had another one that a tight loss, and you win two out of those three, you're in good shape and probably <coughs> at large. Um, and hopefully, we're going through the experience of the NIT, we'll have that edge in tight games and filed that way in the the mental yeah. <laughs> bank. Muhammad, is this the quietest that Coach Smith talks? Is it can't be frequently you hear him talk this quietly. No, he he pretty quiet during, oh, okay. like unless we play. Then, 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 then he's a different person. Then he's a different person. <laughs> a lot of good bigs in the in the league this year, Muhammad. I know you probably haven't looked ahead, but from what you remember from last year, the challenge for you being being a big in this conference and having success. Mm, it's it's a great challenge. I think it's just it's just a way for me to get better competing every time with the good big in the other teams. I know like back to I've got like good bigs in every team. I think it's going to be great. Take a look at the uh, schedule that you guys have in front of you. Some of the some of the headline games uh, this year, CUNLV, the Pac to, uh, Pac-12 uh, Coast to Coast Challenge with Baylor uh, ranked 5th in the nation right now about, you know, just over a month away. What do you see ahead in your schedule, coach? Oh, we, we, we might have been off one week and chew. <laughs> no, we, you know, we wanted to, like I said, it's year four. We wanted to elevate our program. We felt like getting on the national stage in the NIT is not the tournament we want to play in, but getting the New York was a really fun thing, a really cool thing. And, then, um, and now it's like, hey, we got to try to keep our brand out there and let people know, like, man, we're, we're not afraid to play people and get us ready for Pac-12 play. I think we all wanted a 20-game league schedule. The downside of it is you have to play two games early. How does that affect your scheduling? You know, um, I, it, it, good point. I hadn't thought about it as much because those those league games sneak up on you pretty quick. And, and uh, I don't know. I'm, it is well, what it is. Yeah, it is what it is, right? to be honest. <laughs> you know, I, I hadn't thought about it. You just reminded me. <laughs> Well, it's set in, t- in stone, so you'll just go play it, and yeah. uh, hopefully a lot of wins ahead for the Cougs. Good luck this year, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. That is our preview of Washington State basketball with tip-off just around the corner on the Palouse.